Hi there, this is a video of my Snow Queen Nectarine. It's a white nectarine from Dave Wilson Nursery. It's uh, multi-planted along with uh, a white peach called the Indian Free Peach from Dave Wilson Nursery as well. As you can see in this video, I have this tree wrapped up in a tree cover and, uh, and I'm doing this to protect my fruit trees from squirrels. Squirrels have been a major problem for me and I'm evaluating um, four different types of netting to see which one works best to protect my fruit trees and uh, this is one of them. It's called the Fruit Saver Net and it's from an Australian company. Uh, this one is uh, kind of shaped like a mosquito net that you place over a bed frame. It works great to keep the squirrels out. It's easy to put on, it's easy to take off and it's lightweight. And if you've noticed earlier in the video, I'm using my hair styling clips to uh, keep this net sealed. Um, so I put those clips on to uh, close the net and then I take off the clips when I need to harvest some fruit. So it's fairly easy to put on and uh, take off. Going back to the uh, the trees, uh, both the trees here, the uh, nectarine and the peach, are on uh, citation rootstock, and uh, the uh, the snow queen um, here uh, uh, went into the ground about three years ago. It was planted in spring of two thousand sixteen. It set plenty of fruits for me every year. Um, in fact, it oversets quite a bit, and you have to thin it very aggressively if you don't want uh, branches to break. It's also a very low chill variety, so it does really well for me and produces tons of fruit. I it looks like my climate is perfect for uh, something with uh, uh, with uh, this number of chillars. The only issue I've had with this tree is uh, some minor uh, brown rot. Um, uh, it it started last year, and uh, so uh, uh, during the winter, I did uh, apply some dormant spray of copper and dormant oil, and um, and I did prune out um, any infected uh, parts of the tree as well. After that, this year, the amount of brown brown rot has considerably reduced. Um, I don't think it's a problem with the tree. I think it's more of a problem with uh, the uh, the growing uh, conditions. It's uh, right in the middle of my lawn. The sprinklers run once a week, and um, all that uh, wet water that's being uh, sprayed on all the um, on on all the leaves is like a breeding ground for uh, uh, fungal diseases, I guess. So, so my plans for next year is to get rid of the lawn and pretty much mulch the entire backyard and put in um, a new irrigation system that that's best suited for fruit trees or maybe micro sprinklers or a drip irrigation or uh, or something like that and hopefully that will take care of uh, uh, the brown rot uh, issues um, uh, but other than that, uh, this has been a very low maintenance fruit tree. Um, it, uh, it, this year it did produce some really good fruit. Uh, as you'll see later in this video, I have some fruit uh, which measured at about 20 bricks and it was uh, juicy, sweet uh, and very um, um, crisp in texture as well. Um, now it, it depends on what stage of ripeness the fruit is in. If it's uh, very ripe, then it's uh, it, it, it is more on the softer side. But if you harvest it even a few days before it's fully, fully ripe, uh, you get that nice crisp texture as well, along with the, uh, the, with the juicy sweetness. Um, uh, but not all of the fruits were at 20 bricks. Uh, there were a couple which were a lot less sweeter. Um, maybe I need to thin my fruit trees more. Maybe I need to reduce the watering even more. And those, uh, and I'm planning to do those next year to, um, uh, to get these fruits to, to taste their best. Um, so this so it's so so learning to grow fruit trees I guess is more of an ongoing experiment. You have to measure and fine tune till you get the most optimum watering levels and thinning levels uh, that that work for you. Um, and I did I did uh, supplement my soil with some potassium, some amino acids, uh, a humic acid, and a few other supplements as well. 
um, and I don't know if those have really helped to improve the bricks or not. Um, I'll again have to do another experiment next year where I don't supplement some of the trees with anything and see if uh, there is a change in my bricks rating. I have been monitoring my bricks on all of my fruit trees for uh, the last two years and I've seen some marked improvements this year. So I just need to uh, change the variables in the experiments a little bit and figure out what's needed and what's uh, not needed needed um, to uh, to get it to to optimal uh, uh, fruit quality um, and um, what else in 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 terms of uh, the uh, uh, the way the fruit looks once it's cut open it's uh, mostly white on the inside it's got a few streaks of red here and there it looks beautiful and and one of the things that I wanted to point out is um, initially when I looked at these uh, fruits I thought it had some kind of disease on them I thought maybe um, all those uh, the specks that you see on it is uh, is strip damage or it's it's, it's something like that right but uh, and and that's when I found out that that's actually that's it, all those spots that you see on the fr on the fruits it's not a defect it's um, it's actually the sugars in the fruit so the more of those sugar spots that you have the sweeter your fruit is going to be so so those spots are a good thing it's not a defect it's not a cosmetic issue with the fruit or anything like that it still tastes delicious um, it's uh, it's it just means that um, the sun has hit the fruits and uh, it's built up uh, all those sugars and those are just the sugar spots so more sugar spots you have on your fruits the better uh, it's not a defect in any way finally in terms of um, the harvest the fruit does have a fairly good hang time on the tree but in my case i'm just harvesting everything in one go because i have some travel coming up thank you so much for watching bye bye